just like closed my eyes and put music on. What are you listening to? Uh, what was I listening to? Oh, my favorite playlist, Heartbreak play playlist. That shouldn't be your favorite playlist at all. It is right now. I'm not going to delve into it. This is not a relationship, so. Are we rolling? Oh, we already started rolling. <laughs> romantic books have you read that's made you swoon and made you fall in love you know <laughs> um i don't like read a lot of novels and like fiction that could be considered romantic i love reading poetry oh which, really oh, yeah which always like gets me like old and new like poets like like, like you that's how i found you as well like your work through poetry and like but I think the most romantic that also like makes me cry and laugh and everything is The History of Love uh, by Nicole Krauss. Tell me a bit about it then. So what's the relationship with this book then? Uh, I read this book years ago, seven, eight, nine years ago um, in Germany because I lived in Germany in German. Um, this is written in English originally and I read it in German and I remember liking it and then losing the book i don't know how <laughs> it's it maybe like moving house i don't know i just lost it and then um in 2017 yeah. i went on i went to la long flight and at the airport i was like i need a book even though i have brought books with me <laughs> isn't that always the case though that, that's <laughs> do the, you do that as well that is actually like the the gimmick of the airport you need an airport book when you're in the airport exactly <laughs> i'm like i had books in my suitcase and in my handbag i'm like let me, I need an let, airport me, book <laughs> let me get a book, maybe that one that's not too big that I can read on the flight, like, you know, 11 hour flight, maybe I can do it. And um, I, I picked up The History of Love and I, I read the back of it. I was like, oh, that sounds interesting. I'm going to I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to I'm going to buy this one, like sat down on the plane, started reading it like first page, second page, third page. And I was like, this sounds familiar. <laughs> I, feel like I, I don't know. I'm not <laughs> I'm not going to ask if that's a good familiar or a bad familiar, but... No, like, I was like, I, I, I feel like I've read this. I had, like, this deja vu. I was like, I read this book. But I it think. was in a different... Oh, you mean because it was in a different German? language, <laughs> yes. Like, oh, it, so you didn't realise. Sorry, no, I just completely I, missed that. I picked oh. it... Yeah, sorry, I didn't explain it. I picked it up in English, oh, basically. Oh, after you'd read it, yeah. Yeah, and so I was like, this, uh, this sounds familiar, but because I had read it in German before and this was English, like, I didn't clock it that I actually had read it until a few chapters in. Like, oh. And I was like... Oh my gosh, I read this before, and it, it, I feel like it's so special also because it, it's it found me oh, again. Like the book yeah. found me again, and oh, it's just so beautiful. Like from the first sentence in the book, it just made me laugh and cry. What's the first sentence? The chapter is titled "The Last Words on Earth," oh, and wow. the first sentence is "When they write my obituary tomorrow or the next day, it will say Leo Gorski is survived by an apartment full of shit." <laughs> I'm sold, I'm sold, I'll definitely be <laughs> it's, it's, it's such a beautiful, it's like so tender and funny and um, and deep. It's just, yeah, they even made it into a, a movie. Oh, okay. But I haven't seen it yet, I'm scared. Yeah, you don't want to ruin that. It happens like that sometimes. Sometimes yeah. they, they put the film and it kind of ruins the whole. Yeah. I want to ask you a question actually about reading in dual languages. I have a friend and I was telling him, um, he's, he's read War and Peace, so I was telling him about my experience. And he's, he's read it in Russian, mm. he's read it in English, and his wife speaks another language, and I think French or something, I don't know, it might be Italian, he said he's, and he said he's going to read it in that as well. What's the experience of reading a book in different languages? Um, the same book? The same book. I think it depends, for me, it depends what, what the book was written in originally. So if okay. the author is, like, German, for example, and they write a book in German, then, because I have read a few books, like, in, in both, then it just hits differently it, it just is different in the original language. Yeah. It's like, it's, it's different. Like this, reading this in English got me way more, like got a grip on my heart, like way more than reading it in German. Oh, okay. So I think the translations often lose a little bit. I oh, think. that's tragic. That's, that's kind of, that's my experience. And I think it also depends on the book and yeah. also who translates it and all of that. But for me, I think whatever language it was originally written, I think that hits you the deepest. So. I mean, I think it makes sense because it's like the author speaking directly to you, whereas when it's yeah. translated, there's a third party, like, in yeah. inter intermediate, intermediary, yeah. yeah, kind of. And like. they often, they can't ask the author, um, maybe because yes. they don't live anymore, whatever, they can't ask for feedback, so it's just whatever they think works the best, 
um, with poetry, it's like the same. So, yeah, poetry, like one of my favorite poets is Rainer Maria Rilke, the German. Um, he's German and he's so famous. And Lady Gaga has like his uh, poetry like tattooed on her, and like oh. people share that. I see like people share his stuff on Instagram in English, and it just doesn't sound the, the same. same. Yeah. Um, if if you know the original, so I think for me that's my experience personally. Like I I do think it hits differently oh. in the original. So speaking of your experiences, what is your experience of reading like as a child, especially as someone who's like is bilingual? Is that someone who can read different languages? Bilingual is still the right bilingual, term. Bilingual, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you're bilingual. <laughs> like you're literally literally bilingual. What was yeah. your experience reading like as a teenager coming up? Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I'm Italian and I grew up in Germany. So I grew up with both languages, reading both as well, and then added English to it when I was like 11, and like we started learning English in school. Um, and I think growing up, I think the, I was the most connected to German because that was all around me the whole time. Yeah. Um, it was like a different world outside of the house, and Italian was just the in inside the house language. Yeah. Um, with my parents. But then outside, it's like I didn't use it. it that my outside, my world language was German. Yeah. Um, and so I felt the most connected, like reading German and German books. And oh my gosh, like growing up, I would go to our local library and we had like tiny village every week getting a stack of four or five <laughs> huge, like huge novels. Like I don't even know. My parents didn't even check what I was reading. <laughs> like I, these these big novels from whoever, that's one of like, the advantages with parents. As long as it's a book, it's okay. You know. Yeah, I mean? yeah. Read, yeah. <laughs> exactly. It was different with movies and like exactly, stuff to watch. Yeah. But as long as I was reading like these huge books, like I would read them in a week or two and bring them back the next week and then like or, like take home really? another. Like that was that was my life as a teenager. Like the library, um, I loved it. So that was like, if that's dope then. So what book did you pick up in the library that really kind of like <laughs> formulated your your, teen, your adult experience or teenage experience? I remember reading a lot of like, I don't know if you know Daniel Steele. Of course, she, yeah, for, she, for, for mature women. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Of course I know, yeah, for mature like women. like 13, 13 <laughs> yeah. reading. But no, she has like some amazing like novels <laughs> and one of my favorite ones, and I wasn't, I haven't been able to find it again. I can't, I've tried to Google like the title and stuff. It's about four sisters and it spans over generations it's the book reminds me of you know this is us the of show of course like the that, greatest show yes ever on exactly yeah. <laughs> the greatest show ever do you know the greatest show ever <laughs> um and that's what the book reminds me of like it spans over generations mm. and i loved it as a teenager I, I read it more than once it's like this massive yeah i, I, I used to see a couple book. of her books like my grandma's house you know i mean i yeah. feel like it was just a staple in like the house. I don't know if she ever read it. I've never asked her, but she'd have Daniel still, Agatha Christie, like you know those kind of like. Also, I love to read. So random. This just I just rem remember this. Mary Higgins Clark. She wrote like crime, um, all kinds of like crime novels. Yeah. Loved it. And I think as a teenager, like I I lived in this tiny German town that I didn't What's like. What's the town it called actually? I haven't, I haven't. <laughs> Should I say it on camera? Heubach. Um, if anyone's watching from there. <laughs> big up Heubach. Um, Heubach. Big yeah. up Heubach. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Tiny. And I, I hated it. And I felt, as I told you earlier, like I felt like I don't belong. And I read, which is interesting because now I don't anymore. I read mostly, I read just fiction. I read novels, all the novels I could find. Like I was just devouring all the novels. And I think for me, definitely it was a way of escaping. The environment, yeah. Like getting out there in like imagining a different world, seeing a different world through the books, like that's out there. Yeah. Uh, because I felt so, like, yeah, you feel trapped. so restricted. I think that was yeah. the beauty of before the, not before the internet, but before the internet was what it was in social media. Oh, before the internet. Like I, I grew up. Uh, I was born in the eighties. Like I grew up without yeah, internet. Yeah, exactly. Actually, yeah, we, we grew up same here. Yeah. yeah. So before the internet, yeah, yeah, it was an opportunity to see what was happening in different parts of the world. You know, I really exactly. like formed so much of my worldview from what this author told me it's like in like Stephen King, what it's like in Maine, you know what I mean? Yeah. Or what, what it's like yeah. in Middle Earth, you know what I mean? Whatever, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Exactly, exactly, 100%. So that was definitely a means to escape for me. And like being able to imagine, wow, like there's there's other lives out there. There's a different world. And because at home, again, it was a different world in my house. Like, very conservative, very Christian. Um, and my parents only like read the Bible to us. <laughs> so it's... Um, <laughs> It was definitely, the library was my escape, yeah. like all these books. It's interesting. I don't know that much about Sicilian culture, but I guess it sounds like it's very like 
it's very religious in some in some in some capacity, and that was like shaped shaped a lot of your mm. your upbringing. I want to get to that, but I feel like you're the first guest that's actually brought us like books. You know, what I'm saying you've actually normally we get books for the guests. But yeah. You've actually brought us these books. They don't have these here. So. <laughs> I don't think they would have these here. Yeah. Do you want to tell us a bit about these? I think like. Do you want to read this? <laughs> well, yeah, I'll try. I'll do my best German. My brother-in-law's German, you know. I could go like, into his house and, and he'd read. I, I'd get him to read it to me to bed, you know what I mean? He'd enjoy that. It's a really cute... It's very... It, and it's very tragic. It's the real story. So the author um, actually owned this horse. Like, so it's, it's a story of her, like, being a teenager and growing up with this horse. And then in the end, the horse dies. <laughs> and oh. it's like... Um, it's a, Spoiler alert. That was like... It, it's weird. This book made it with me to all the places I've moved to. Different countries, different cities. So this is the original one you had when you was yeah, a child? Yeah, yeah. Wow. <laughs> it's, I don't know why this made it. Like, I've always just... I feel pressure it. now. Let me not, let me not drop <laughs> it or something. You know what I mean? I feel like I've it's got a piece cover. of childhood. It's hardcover. You're good. No, it's like... It's weird. Like, yeah, I've never... I, I'm not able to separate myself oh, from this book <laughs> i love it um do you reread it sometimes no <laughs> i haven't read it in, i don't know how long probably since i was a child um but i know i know the story and maybe i should read it again it's just so like yeah one of those sentimental pieces i can't i'm not able to let yeah. it go yeah so the title is uh, benny mein bestes stück <laughs> which is which means benny my my best piece like so benny's like the horse her horse um, and yeah, it's like, I love, I love this book. And then, uh, Jossie, is that how you say it? Jossie? Um, by Joyce Stranger. Like it's like, it's like this tiny book about a dog. So they're all, like animal themed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I grew up on a farm. So oh, really? You didn't yeah. mention that. Okay. I'm, a, I'm a country potato, <laughs> but, um, uh, um, a friend of my parents gave this book to me when I was 10 or 11. Um, she lived in Germany. She's, but she's Canadian. And she gave this to me, like, to learn English. And it's the first English book I read. Wow. Um, like, I had to, like, look up, not online, but in, like, a dictionary. <laughs> I had to look up, like, so many words while I was reading um, it the first time. So that's how I, like, started reading mm -hmm. English with this book. How, how did it feel after you finished it? And then it was like, did it feel like an accomplishment? Oh, or did yeah. It, yeah. That's amazing. Like, I, I'm fluent in English now. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was amazing. Um, and I think as well, this one I read like more than once for sure. Yeah. yeah. Speaking of that experience, now that you stepped into the world of English reading, was there ever a book that you read that you wasn't supposed to read? Yeah, but not as a child, not as a teen. Although, to be fair, like all the Daniel Steele's and Mary Higgins yeah, Clark yeah, those novels. Are probably, that probably meets, yeah. May, they, I, I, I think, I, honestly, I don't remember that well, but I think there was some stuff in there that probably I shouldn't have read. Yeah, not child appropriate, a, I can as imagine. As a child. Yeah. <laughs> Even like the crime stuff was like... But um, and then the romance novels. But uh, as as a child, I Sorry, did. Sorry, I was... can I just hold you for one second? Yeah. As you know, we're in a real bookshop and real book stuff is happening right now. We have a special. Should I grab that? Yes, you can. Thank you so much. I'm very sorry. Colleen Hoover, make sure you guys grab it. Yeah, so, so Daniel still the, inappropriate. Crime yeah, stuff, a little yeah. bit inappropriate, but it was kind of still innocent. I don't remember, be, like, I, yeah, I don't even remember the content. There you go. Like, I, I didn't feel like, oh, this is like something I'm not supposed to read. I was kind of just like going through it. Actually, as a grown up, like I, um, when I kind of deconstructed my faith and stuff a bit more I started reading stuff that I wouldn't have literally wouldn't have been allowed to as a child like Harry Potter which sounds stupid it, it, it sounds not, stupid saying listen, it now, but every guest that comes on this show <laughs> every African guest I thought it was just an African thing exclusive says that he wasn't allowed to read it actually Vuj is from Serbia actually and he said he wasn't allowed to read it either but it was like it's like a recurring theme I don't know where or what it seems like the most popular book in the world but all my guests mm, didn't weren't allowed yeah. to read it yeah it's interesting uh, yeah, it, obviously, because it has witchcraft in it. Um, and my parents were super Christians. So mm. it was like, yeah, you're not allowed to read that. I wasn't even allowed to read the Old Testament for a really long time. Like, really? until I was like 15 or 16. Then my parents were like, okay, can we, because it's like too bloody and too, oh, <laughs> like, really? too no, that's cruel. Oh, that's interesting, yeah. Um, so you just read like the King James. You, you, just, you just read the New Testament, you know, like the Gospels and the, the, the cute stuff about Jesus, but nothing else. <laughs> oh, wow. Um, so uh, I, I think like when I first started reading the Old Testament, I was, I, I don't think I even grasped and understood understood what the hell was going on it's like it's because it's quite intense but I think yeah as a grown-up actually starting to s like expand what I what I what I was reading you know not just like the novels from when I was a child not just the bible not just um, Christian 
theologian books because that's what I was reading for a long time as well oh, just like wow. Christian books loads of Christian books um, and then breaking out of that and be like oh I can read anything <laughs> um, uh, that was really exciting and a lot of stuff felt like um, prohibited like mm. things about deconstruction um, Harry Potter literally did you enjoy um, Harry Potter when you read I it? I loved it. Oh my God. I read it at the age of 34, oh. 33. I was like, what? Like how, like literally 20 years after it came out, like I think it was the year of the anniversary because I got like this anniversary um, oh, box. Oh, the books, are, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, like, uh, or edition. Literally 20 years after I read it and I was like, this is amazing. And have you ever read a book to impress somebody? Um, a, a guy, you know. I, I can't think of any like yeah. when you asked me like I was like mm, I, I, nothing comes to mind I think and if I have because I'm thinking I must have right <laughs> maybe I must have done there's that there's peer pressure there's a lot of literary yeah. snobbery you know what I, I mean? have read books um I think because they're like everywhere right and everyone like reads them God, can I think of one right now like you know yeah they're just like everyone reads them and everyone's like oh my gosh this is amazing you have to read it and it's like in the front of all the bookstores yeah. Um, I've had that experience and where I was like, oh, this actually didn't, this is like totally overrated. <laughs> I didn't like it. That, yes, but not to impress anyone just because it was promoted so much. Yeah, in the same way. And then I think a lot, that happens to a lot of people where it's like, oh, this is like the famous book now, but I didn't enjoy it. Yeah, I get what you mean. I've had that experience a couple of times. I won't mention any of the books, but yeah. I have. <laughs> is, when you started reading, is there a book that made you, the last book that made you cry? The last book Not the last one, cry. the one that made you cry. <laughs> so the last biography I read, I just finished it a few weeks ago, was Viola Davis. Oh, her wow. biography, well, that Finding home. Me. That made me cry. And the last book, uh, um, literally, I finished three days ago, was Becoming the One that, that made me cry. Like from What's start. that about? It's a self-development book. <laughs> <laughs> Where did um, this, what brought the tears? What? Um, oh, my gosh. It's like, like I've, I've done therapy before and stuff but literally this book is like six years of therapy in one book and it's just it's just a lot when you when you read it in like a few pages yeah. all the work that you normally do over years it's just <laughs> it sound, I don't know whether I want to pick it up now. It sounds like it's a heavy duty lift reading. Well, I feel like you are definitely like from reading your newsletter and what you put out there and you 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 are married like I feel like you are you are doing that work. You are on your way like um, like you can tell when someone speaks like repeat stuff that sounds good or when someone speaks because they've embodied something they are actually living something and you're definitely writing first-hand experience okay. you're embodying like what 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 you're writing like you, you can tell like it's not just repeating thank you, know. you very much flattery will get you nowhere <laughs> flattery will not get you any special preference but i appreciate it a couple books over there that i know you have interest in narratives and experience as, okay. as, as, that pertains to them all right yeah Thank cool you. let's explore it you were just admiring the hendrix book yeah yeah great photo yeah i mean obviously <laughs> photography plays a, a big part in, in your life i loved what you were telling me off camera about photos and how important they are to people because i'll be honest with you i'm a reluctant I don't, a reluctant subject you know what i mean yeah. i'm always a person that's like why do i have to smile yeah all that kind of stuff well I you don't have to smile true I think what you said was beautiful, though. Yeah. You know, yeah. the whole idea of, like, you want to repeat it, you put, I probably can't articulate it as good as you could. <laughs> well, yeah, we, we were saying, like, there's so many people who say they don't really care about photos. Like, it's, like, and also it's a commodity because you can get photos so easily, so cheap today, like, just on your phone. Um, it's so accessible to become a photographer. Um, like, it doesn't cost you that much to start out and all of that. So it's, I feel like people don't really value it. And, and some people even say, like, oh, they don't really care, like, about photos. But photos are one of those things in life that um, become more valuable with time. Like, because with time, you lose your memories about things. Like you said, with your, you know, yeah. the albums you lost, like, in your family, where your mom's like, I wish I still had them because you forget things. Yeah. You lose your memories. Uh, you lose people in your life as well and so suddenly those photos that you didn't care about become more valuable yeah. um to you because it's kind of a way to bring back memories bring back people so i think obviously i'm biased like it is my job but it's more than my job yeah, like i i love 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 photography so much for so many reasons that's a big one i think no i think it's important and i feel like for any of particularly husbands if you're the reluctant photo person out here I think that's a good message no because you know like you said I think over time 
even the photos that I didn't want to take, I'm looking back and be like, oh, wow, I remember we was on the park bench yeah. and I was tired, especially with my son. I was tired and I was frustrated and he was crying, but I, at the moment still exists somewhere. You exactly. Know I mean? And like you love looking at pictures from your parents and your great like grandparents yeah. and stuff. Don't you love that when love you discover it. like these old photos the same way? your children, grandchildren will love seeing, imagine there would no, be no pictures of you, mm. like in 50 years, in 100 years, and they can't look at anything, like, which obviously is, won't be the case, there's, yeah, yeah, there's yeah. loads of, of, of footage of I've you. I've got a whole Wikipedia page, it's, man, don't worry great. about that. That's, that's <laughs> great, and there are people who don't, like, they, yeah. they have so few images of themselves, and, um, but yeah, for the future, whether you have children or not, it doesn't even matter, like, everyone after you is such a precious, um, mm proof that you existed it's interesting i feel like a lot of people's creative discipline is somehow impacted by like their reading experience or their like experience from characters they read in books mm. How, where did photography come into your life from mm. i think I've, I've, I've always been creative i've always been an artist like from like school was my worst nightmare like oh. i didn't like school i didn't enjoy school <laughs> um i only enjoyed like uh any creative subjects we had yes. whether that was art which we unfortunately in my school didn't really have a lot of offerings for but like anything with art or languages those were the only things i enjoyed <laughs> the only things i was good at anything else or like sciences and stuff it was horrible i didn't even know for such a long time what am i gonna do with my life <laughs> like because i had no one around me no examples of a creative life of like people who do something with the art for a living it was always yeah. a hobby like if you do something artsy it's a hobby yeah like, yeah, it's 100%, not, yeah yeah you won't yeah, yeah. you won't especially <laughs> that that time you know what i mean exactly 90s, early not 90s, that time yeah. exactly not early 90s kind of yeah yeah like i had no examples in my surrounding everyone had the same five jobs like you know teacher engineer whatever like it was the same nurse like everyone i knew did the same things like nobody did uh, something out of the <laughs> convention at that time and um and so yeah it was it was like I, I i never picked up a camera either it was it's not the story you know i was in the dark room with my grandpa <laughs> like some people have that story my dad used to be a photographer nothing i would always um draw and paint a lot and always faces always people that was kind of i, I did a bit of sculpture stuff like when i was growing up like in art school um, like after school hours, but um, actually went to study theology. <laughs> I went to Bible college. Um, and when I was 19, I came to London for a gap year for one year. And my parents gave me like a tiny point and shoot as a gift um, oh. coming here. It was literally one of the first digital point and shoot cameras yeah. out there. It was 2005. Um, it was like chunky and um, but it was digital and that's how I actually, that was the first time I got into photography oh, wow. because of that little camera. I hadn't used a camera before. Just like, you know, when you're on holiday with your parents, the film yeah, camera, yeah, yeah, yeah. but that was it. Um, and that's how I started. And then um, I, I studied though, I studied theology, Bible college, completely different, but I, on the side, I was always photographing and then I started photographing people um, and someone asked, would you take pictures of me? And like, I charged them like whatever, 20 bucks or something like. Big so, money, big money, yeah, heavy Yeah, and duty. then, so like, I literally slid into it. I think that happens to a lot of photographers like that I know. Someone asked me, can you shoot my wedding? Mm. <laughs> um, and I was like, yeah, sure. <laughs> 300 bucks, man, I'm rich. Like, yeah, I'm gonna Bullying. shoot your wedding. <laughs> and um, and I kind of, I slid into it, like I, I loved it. And, and that's how it st all started. Like, this wasn't a plan. But it was something like creative that um, that I enjoyed so much. It was it was like drawing a portrait, which yeah. I did all my life, but it was quicker. <laughs> it was like within a second you had a portrait of someone, and that's how I like yeah photography happened. It's interesting. I, I feel like no, I feel like you touched on two things that I, I want to expand upon, yeah. and it's related in a way. But my I used to love drawing as well. My experience is is a bit different because mm. that was one of my first passions, but. I'm Muslim, so as in Islam, you're not actually allowed to draw faces. I'm not. I'm that, yeah, am I am I correct in that capacity? I don't. I'm not a scholar. You know what I mean? But so so I. Do you actually, know why that is? Um, it's probably a longer conversation that we could have at this moment in time. But yeah, so so I actually I I, could, I never really pursued art mm. because of that specific reason to to the extent that I wanted yeah. to. And I mean, I, I suppose other <clears throat> mediums. Hence why poetry as well, because. Mm. Music also has a lot of stigma attached to it in mm. Islam, so mm. poetry kind of became 
that kind of like expression for me, which is has big roots in um, like Arabic culture, etc. But it's interesting because I guess religion also seems to have shaped like a massive part of your upbringing, your discipline, and your perspective yeah. of the world. Yeah. I mean, um, name a book that kind of like got you into religion, like in, 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 from like a creative standpoint. Because yeah. I think we we touched on it a bit, and I just wanted to kind of segue into yeah. the fact that we have it here. Uh, you mean apart from the Bible? <laughs> we, got, we can get to the Bible, yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, the stuff we I was allowed to read. Um, and it's kind of creative, definitely any C.S. Lewis stuff. So the Chronicles of Narnia, um, I read like, yeah, when I was like a teenager, I think in German, obviously, and then in English. Um, again, same thing. I think the English version is a lot better. Yeah. Um, and that was kind of because it's an analogy for yeah, like yeah, yeah. Jesus's sacrifice. That was like accepted. With Aslan and yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so it was acceptable to read. And I. I loved the whole, even like the movies I like, like I love the whole world well, like, yeah, yeah, that yeah, he yeah, created no, yeah. um, to kind of explain um, the gospel. Um, so yeah, that was, that's definitely the whole series. It's actually mm -hmm. interesting because I remember I met a guy once and he said to me, he's not religious, mm -hmm. not religious at all. He said, mm -hmm. but he said the only book that's ever opened him up in his life was The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe. So he says every time mm -hmm. he goes through a dilemma, he always goes back to The Lion, the Witch mm -hmm. and the Wardrobe, which I thought was such a weird experience. But for him, it works. You know, I mean, he said, as a kid, that made him imagine, you know, and he's mm -hmm. very successful, actually. That's Let's talk about the Bible. You know, I, I sent you a question, yeah. which was like, and I didn't, I said to you, what? You didn't expect that. I didn't expect that. <laughs> I, said, I, said, I said to you, what book do you think is overrated? And yeah. you said to me, and you responded by saying the Bible. And first I was like, okay, you know, but then I was like, <laughs> This is definitely something that we have yeah. to touch on in some capacity, yeah. <laughs> respectfully, yeah. of course. But yeah, yeah, um, yeah. You asked which author and book do I think is overrated? Yeah. Definitely the Bible <laughs> and its author, because um, uh, and that's just kind of the the answer was a, a little bit humorous, like to me, like yeah, it was yeah, like. I, I could... uh, but also, I, I, I am serious. I think it is overrated. Like growing up, I was always told. <laughs> Like the Bible is like the most successful book in the world. It has sold the most. Yeah, um, yeah which it has, yeah. Um, and it, which, to, as of today, I don't know if that's still true. I actually don't know. Like I haven't looked up re I think, recent statistics. I think Paulo Coelho must have sold it, outsold it one year. Maybe, maybe Fifty yeah. Shades of Grey. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I feel like maybe it fluctuates. Yeah. yeah, but like I guess in in the whole scheme of things, like it's like the most successful book, and it has survived so many things, and like being burned and being like uh, prohibited has survived so many things and that's proof that it's like a godly book yeah. <laughs> that god has protected this book da, da, da. so and obviously it was um, like literally as we were babies my brother and i and every night like we would um sit and my dad would read the children's bible to us or sometimes from the the proper adult bible and then we would pray and like obviously went to bible college i studied it like to me it's like now I appreciate it as a history book. Like, yeah. I still find it super fascinating. Uh, yeah, um, I have, like, my Bible at home is, like, falling apart. I've had it since I was 17, and um, it's full of, like, post-its and everything because it's the one I also used studying, and it was my whole life. That book was my North Star. Like, I, I believed it was God's word. Um, I lived, tried to live according to it, like, the whole shebang. Like, I did the whole... Christian career and when I say Christian like even though I am Italian yeah. like we didn't grow up Catholic so my parents are actually evangelical Pentecostal okay interesting. like hardcore Bible believing <laughs> um, and so like that's the world I grew up in like taking it very very literally like there's Christians who are more progressive like yeah. who like see a lot of things just as symbolic and I I literally I studied it and I, I took everything literal and a applied it to my life and um, until like four years ago where um, I left that whole world behind but like the deconstruction of it um, started like in my 20s of course like it wasn't like overnight um, just um, yeah studying I think studying it really really helped yeah. um, getting a clearer um, picture on why this cannot be true for me. Oh, wow, that's interesting. <laughs> I mean, it's heavy. I mean, for me, yeah. as someone who um, I grew up, you know, my, my grandma, my, most of my family are heavily Christian. My wife is Christian. Yeah. And, you know, I remember I, I really enjoyed the, the children's Bible because my yeah. grandma used to read it to me every single mm. night and I loved the stories from it. 
I yeah. guess my assumption, I always felt that if I delved more into the Bible and many religious scriptures, mm. you'd gain a greater appreciation, whereas for you it was the opposite. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, well, you... I, I actually loved studying it. I loved going to Bible college. It was yeah. a very conservative one, and I actually did enjoy that still to this day. I don't regret going. Um, I think that can be the case for some people that they fall more in love with it. But what also happens, and I think, I don't know how honest maybe other people are about that, yeah. and that's inevitable. What also happens when you study something that in depth, you have a lot more questions as well. Mm. Like so much stuff comes up. And being behind the scenes, um, like not in church, but in Bible college, it gave me like, uh, with the professors who were all like Bible believing conservatives, but I realized behind the scenes when they were teaching us, they were like really honest. And they, it, I realized behind the scenes, theologians don't necessarily agree on a lot of things and they're not sure about things. Like, but on stage, in church, it will be presented to you as truth, as like a fact. And this is something really silly, but... Um, I mean, it's your it's personal experience. Like, I'm yeah, gonna, yeah, but like Adam and Eve, for example. <laughs> I grew up 100% believing they were real historical people because um, that was presented to us as facts. Yeah. At Bible college, like our professors were like, ah, oh, they probably didn't exist. Like as Oh, actual, they, Adam and Eve said that? Yeah, as actual people. And, we, and I was like 21 baby Christian. I was like, what? <laughs> what do you mean? Like, it sounds weird saying I mean, I would now. say the same thing. Yeah, would, yeah. Yeah, I, I would be like, what? And they were like, well, you know, and, and then there's a whole, there's so many reasons for that, why they didn't exist as like actual people, but, and that is symbolic. And I was like, wait a minute. If Adam and Eve weren't real people, actual people, that means like the whole creation story and the sin fall and sin entering the world, that means that didn't happen. So what do we need Jesus' sacrifice for then? Like, there's a whole thread of, like, if this is not true, then this cannot be true. Like, the whole thing falls apart. It doesn't make oh, any sense. Yeah. And so, like, I've, I've always been really a big why person. <laughs> but, like, that set off a whole um, decade of um, questioning and, like, researching and... and and going beyond just reading Christian books because I was just reading from Christian authors who were obviously using other Christian authors and the Bible to prove their point. Yeah, yeah. So you, you can never actually Is research it? on a neutral level. Like, it's always bias. It's yeah, always, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. It's yeah. kind of like when you argue with someone sometimes. And I think it's important to challenge people. Yeah. And they just be like, oh, because like maybe, oh, because God said so. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like, I get yeah. that's your belief, but if you yeah. can argue from a neutral standpoint for someone who yeah. doesn't have that same yeah. system. And that's hard when you've been indoctrinated from birth, like to actually go there. And it's scary. Like my whole identity and my life was wrapped up in this being true <laughs> it's like when, it's like literally unraveling a jumper you pull at one thread and then like wait like just more and more and more and more questions where it was like this doesn't make sense it's this is no <laughs> it, i can't i can't even yeah and what was so, it how did that manifest in your life then in terms of i mean your, your entire life has been built around a specific yeah. structure yeah. what's the manifestation of that um I lost a lot of friendships. I lost my social network, like the whole church community. Um, they ostracize you for it, not like in a obvious way, like not like directly saying, "Oh, we, you know, we can't be friends anymore." Although one person said that to me, and I have like two friends still from like those like church times, and we're still close friends. But everyone else kind of slowly didn't text back or like, you know, was busy and kind of kind of exited my life was it were you very public about your opinions or? yeah yeah oh, okay. but also like with friendships and stuff and in my family during that time of research I would always talk to people about it right I'm like about my questions and stuff and um you could tell like some people were like well of course you can ask questions you know and like the pastor and stuff but you can't ask this is a bit too far like this is a bit like don't go there like it's kind of that that's that's why it's called faith, you know. <laughs> you just have to believe this. Like, you can't, this question is okay, but this one isn't, like, kind of. So over, the t over time, like, I, I was always, like, I wasn't hiding it. I was always talking to friends and, like, everyone in my network and my elders and all of that. But when I actually made, took the step and I was like, I'm not, I don't believe this. I can't call myself a Christian. And I didn't, I stopped going to church. Then it was like, uh, I lost a lot of, a lot of people, uh, my whole community. Um, 
and also the internal stuff, you know, your identity, like had to grief my, my past life and who I was, had to grief the loss of God, this thing that I believed was there, um, and, and also left my marriage. So it was all a whole... All at the same time. Yeah, all at the same time. <laughs> It, I mean, yeah, it doesn't sound, I don't think it'd be easy for anyone to, but I, but I think it, it might be more particularly difficult for you based on how much of your life was entrenched. Like you say, I know a lot of Christians, you know, but th they didn't go into theology. I've only ever met one person who wanted to be a theologist in my entire mm. life. You know what I mean? So it's interesting. I mean, mm. yeah, it sounded, I'm sorry to hear, it sounded like a tough experience. It was tough, but I'm not sorry it happened. Okay, sure. yeah. Yeah, this is my personal, obviously. Life is so much better now. In that context, yeah. when it comes to reading now then, since you've replaced what was once your favourite mm. book, what's, what are your favourite books now then? Mm. I mean, now like it's like the world is my playground. I can read anything, I can watch yeah. anything, which is really nice. Um, I do, I think 90% or more is like I read non-fiction. Yeah. Um, and uh, I really like enjoy that, whether that's biographies. I love biographies. Mm. I love reading about other people's lives. I mean, I'm a photographer. I love other people's stories, yeah. like love listening to them. And I think they inspire me a bit more than novel like or fiction because mm. they're real. Yeah, somewhat, right. Yeah. I, I'm sure you get that where it's like when it's fiction, I'm like, OK, it's made up. But when I read someone's actual life, I feel like if it was possible for this person, it's possible for me too, because yeah. it's a real story. So I do love biographies, nonfiction. Um, one of the most inspiring biographies I read recently, like a couple months ago, was Aftershocks by Nadia Obusu. Like, she um, was gone in. Yeah, and like grew up in Italy as well. And she has that whole belonging identity crisis that I've been through as well. Um, and it's like, have you read it? No, I haven't. But I know she's gone in. I will, I'll put it on my list. I'll definitely Beautiful, read it. honestly, beautiful biography um, and also reads very poetic as well um, very beautiful story um, uh, so that's like one of my favorites and I love uh, a book called this by Michael Gunger um, it's one of the most inspiring books I think I've ever read and he also used to be like e evangelical Christian yeah. and wrote this book after his deconstruction um, about it's called this because the, basically, the whole notion of the book is: what if this is all there is? Oh. Like, it's it's just a gorgeous book about like yeah, being present, uh, owning your life, taking responsibility instead of outsourcing it. <laughs> no, I, <laughs> which, um, which is I'm not saying everyone that is religious does that, but it's definitely it was the case yeah. for how I grew up. And I think it's an important message, irrespective of your beliefs. You mm. get what I'm saying? I, I feel like a lot of people, and it's not to judge, but they do tend to rationalize their experience or kind of like their situation based on external factors, you get mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Rather mm -hmm. than, I think, it can't, no, it sounds like a very interesting book. I'm, I'm, oh, yeah. yeah. That being said, speaking of biographies, if you were to write a book, what would it be about? <laughs> I think I'd like to write, I have started. This oh, really? Like, I Exclusive. Start Exclusive. I don't know. Sorry, that's a no, very hip hop thing. Like, it's not. <laughs> I mean, no, nobody <laughs> is like, I, it's, it's not like someone, you know, asked yeah. me to write about, uh, to write, but. I, I kind of started like obviously writing a little bit about my story, um, what has happened so far, um, because I think, not just because I think, oh my gosh, it's so interesting, everyone should read it, but because I think um, it can help people who are going through, that's, I mean, that's what it does, that's yeah. what art does, right? And like books specifically in this context, we relate, um, it makes us feel less alone if someone else shares what they're going through and we can relate to it, we feel less lonely and we have more strength to keep going. So that I would love to write about like this whole trajectory of like burning down one life <laughs> and starting a second one. Lighting the fire on the new one. Yeah, and that whole trajectory. I'd love to write a book about Sicily, where I'm from, where my parents are from, because every book I've seen like in bookshops and stuff about Sicily is written by Americans or like British people. <laughs> And I'm like, why? <laughs> like, it, that, it's just an interesting, um, yeah, the ones that I've seen. So I'd love to explore my, my past and like where I'm from a bit more, uh, for sure. Two books you'd recommend to anyone watching? Ooh, um, Women Who Run With the Wolves. Nice. Uh, I mean, Maya Angelou said everybody should read this book. 
if she said it. <laughs> yeah, the rest <laughs> of the song, yeah, yeah, yeah. My, if everyone, Maya said it, not just women, good. everyone should yeah. read this book. Oh, it's, whew, it took me two years to read the book. Like, it, it never takes me. I read books in like two days. Yeah. It took me two freaking years <laughs> to read this book. Um, wow. It's an incredible, like, homecoming. It's incredible. Uh, it just it just reaches so deep into into yourself um, into transformation and um, yeah just just literally taking all the layers off that you have on from society from your family blah, 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 yeah. and, and getting to the core of who you are it's it's an incredible book can't even describe it <laughs> like it's a, it's no you amazing. sold it to me you sold um, it to me women who run with the wolves for sure um, I think another book that has changed so much for me. It, business wise but also in life is start with why by simon sinek love simon sinek he's a bit yeah. like still under the radar somehow is he i feel like compared to people like gary v or, okay you know, yeah okay okay and i i think yeah the reason is just because his his um whole message is just not the individualistic capitalist like it's not that yeah, yeah. it's the slower route yeah know? i was gonna say that going it's a bit more subtle, yeah, yeah a bit it's more. going the wholesome not just business 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 it's like it's the wholesome route like yeah. uh, considering ev your whole life not just um, I mean everyone wants everything so fast nowadays yes it? yes and I think that's why he said like sometimes like but that book changed my life uh, it changed how I approached my business it and like life as well not just work um, and it made me understand a lot of things why I do what I do like start with why mm -hmm. like I love why like if like my friends know this, like I ask why all the time, like I just, I never like stop. Um, um, and obviously my favorite novel, The History of Love, I think everyone should read I'm it. I'm going to read that, that's what my, as soon as I finish, I've got one book I'm reading, as soon as I finish, I'm reading that. Yes, and let me, know, let me know what you think. 110%. Yeah, if you, if you enjoy it, it's gorgeous. 110%. <laughs> Nadia, thank you so much thank for your time. You. Appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. <laughs>